right, guys, time to gas up and get on the road to Las Vegas. Nope, 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 nope. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our Patreon members for helping the channel grow. More on that later. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well, because as for me, I'm in severe need of a holiday. Unfortunately, the biggest issue in taking a vacation right now is, well, getting there. Gas prices are at an all-time high right now, with little signs of slowing down. And you can say the exact same thing for the airline industry. High fuel prices, combined with cancellations, delays, and short staffing levels, gotta make the average vacationer wonder. How in space do you get to your destination? And it's also got me wondering, how do I want to get to Vegas right now? Should I fly or should I drive? Well, let's go ahead and dig straight into that. Okay, so obviously I wouldn't be making a video if I hadn't done some research for you guys, and well, research I did indeed do. Now keep in mind, these numbers aren't going to be exact estimates on how much it's going to cost you to get to and from Las Vegas from your hometown. What it will do for you is it's going to highlight the regional differences on how much it costs to get to Vegas so that you can plan a bit more effectively. That being said, we're going to make just a few assumptions here. We're picking a solo traveler and a traveling pair. We'll also assume that every traveler is going to want to bring at least one medium suitcase, so they'll either be checking a bag or putting it in the trunk of the car. We're also going to break this experiment out by time zone, each represented by a city. Eastern Standard Time will be represented by my hometown of Brooklyn, New York. Central Standard Time will be represented by Cleveland, Ohio, home of two fab dudes and Drew Carrot. Wait, that's also Eastern Standard Time for some reason. Damn it, okay. Never mind, Chicago instead. Chicago for Central Standard Time, as they've got the airport for it. Mountain Standard Time will be represented by Denver, Colorado, aka home base of Ace of Vegas and Seeking Vegas Sunrise. And finally, Pacific Standard Time's hub will be LA, California, a la The Vegas Paradise, Kino Kid, Cinnamon Girl, and a host of other Vegas channels that it would take an hour just to count. We're also going to be doing the drive in two different cars. We'll pick a Honda Civic for the solo traveler, and a Chevy Impala for the paired traveler. That way we get at least two results for the car travel compared to the plane travel, which we just have to double the cost of. After doing some extensive research, I've picked the following airlines, with roughly early to mid-afternoon arrivals to accommodate the travel time and get you to the hotel casino at around 3pm just in time for check-in. The flight home will be a touch earlier in the morning to accommodate the 11 a.m. checkout schedule of those same hotels. I picked these out early Tuesday, July 5th because I understand you get the best flight prices the Tuesday six weeks ahead of your trip. Speaking of which, here's our lineup of airlines that we selected here. The dates that we picked were August 16th through August 19th to accommodate the average three to four day Las Vegas experience. Flying out of New York, we picked Spirit Airlines because, believe it or not, it's actually the most economical airline coming out of that area. Delta and JetBlue didn't even come close. Representing Chicago will be American Airlines this time. Hidden the Rocky Mountains will be leaving Denver from Southwest. And finally, out of LAX in California, Delta's our best bet on the West Coast. The cars, of course, will be leaving from the same cities. New York is the farthest away by a massive margin, being a clear cross-country drive all highway for a sum total of 38 hours, making it at least a 2-3 to three day trip depending on how you drive and how often you stop. The cars clock in at $665 in gas round trip for the Honda and $794 for the Chevy, and that's not factoring in parking, accommodations on the road, tolls, and gas for driving around in Las Vegas. Comparatively, a single ticket with Spirit Airlines, including the extra fee for your suitcase, comes out to be $374.17 for one person or $748.34 for two, with an approximate five hour flight on a direct flight. This doesn't include any food or beverage at the airport, of course, or on the plane, but we also didn't add in meals for the car trip either, so I wouldn't worry about that yet. Next up is Chicago, and the drive isn't quite as bad. You're only looking at a 28 hour drive, mostly via highway. So about two 14 hour days of driving, or a day and a half if you're just going to drive straight through. The cars clock in at $491 with the Honda Civic, while the Chevy Impala follows with $586, assuming you'd like to gas back up and leave Vegas that is. 
Choosing to fly with American Airlines for a single passenger set us back $471.20 and $942.40 for the two passengers with their bags. Each of these flights has a layover in Phoenix, setting us up for a 5-hour flight, but a direct flight usually takes about 3 hours and 45 minutes anyways. Gassing up and driving from the mile high to Sin City would only set you back $190.06 in your trusty Honda Civic, and about $226.84 in the Impala. Both comfortable cars to be in for a long time if you don't mind being on I-70 for the next 13 hours or so. Longer if it's snowing. But me personally, I prefer the air. Denver International Airport is my airport of choice for Vegas flights. It's a hub for Frontier and United so you can get a better deal by flying with them, but I like Southwest so we're sticking with them. After taxes and fees, $240 gets you to Vegas and back as a solo traveler, or $480 with a friend. Though I've found tickets as low as $99 both ways personally, depending on the time of year. Even at $240, it only takes about 2 hours to get to Vegas. Realistically, in my experience, it's been about an hour and a half, but for the sake of the experiment, we'll put my personal bias aside and say 2 hours. And finally, the City of Angels wraps our experiment. To no one's surprise, driving from California is only going to take you about 4 hours, depending on the time of day. And I'm pretty sure most of that is just getting out of South Central. And with California's traditionally inflated gas prices, here's hoping you stick with the Civic for $91 in fuel expenses. But if you do have to use something like an Impala, it'll only set you back another 20 bucks for $109.43 at the pump. If you choose to brave LAX for your flight to Las Wages, then Delta has you covered. $147.20 per person will get you there and back, and $207.20 will let you check a bag too. Meaning two of you will fly for $414.40 with check baggage. Physical baggage, emotional baggage is charged separately. But in exchange for this premium, you can expect to be out of Cali and into Nevada in an hour and 15 minutes. Though most of my friends say they can make it in something like 45. Cheers to you on that one, Cinnamon Girl. Alright now, let's line this up side by side and see who wins. East Coast looks like a clear win for the flyboys and girls. Unless your car gets remarkable gas mileage, it's actually cheaper to fly and demonstrably faster too. Midwest is a toss-up. If you're on your own, flying should save you about $20, whereas driving as a pair is going to save you a few hundred. Mountain Standard Time is actually better to drive from, by the numbers anyway. It'll save you $20 to $30 solo and as much as $200 in a traveling pair. And obviously leaving from the Pacific Time Zone is going to be an easy $50 cheaper than the solo traveler's flight, and about $200 cheaper for the dynamic duo in the air. So that's it, right? You save the most money by driving to Vegas. End of story. Well, not so fast, Speed Racer. There are one or two more variables that we didn't account for in our initial calculations. Let's dig into those. So first things first, if you're any level of human, you're not fixing to drive for 30 to 40 hours straight. That's not a drive, it's a full-time job. You'll be taking stretching, bathroom, lunch, and sleep breaks, all of which will take some time away from your schedule, not to mention the money for accommodations, hygiene, food, and beverage. The Points Guy has a pretty up-to-date article citing the average hotel room rate at $146.11 a night across the US. That's before any taxes or fees, and depending on where you are, it could be higher, especially if you're traveling at peak tourist season in that area. So before you've even gotten to Vegas, you're risking at least another $150 to $300 on average just to be able to rest, basically eating away your savings and travel right away, at least from Midwest on over. Then there's the factor of time and how much it's worth to you. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average American pulls in about $1,037 a week, or about $25.93 an hour, rounding up to the nearest penny. You can adjust based on your own personal salary, of course, but the way I look at it is like this. Is it worth me working on my vacation, and how much would I charge for this work? In my own personal example, coming from Denver, I'm looking at about 3 hours to get to Vegas from airport door to airport door, or 13 hours by car, so that's a solid 10 hour difference. 
multiply that by the average hourly rate of 10 hours of driving, not including stopping for meals, and that still ends up costing me $259.25 worth of labor on my vacation. Entirely eating my travel savings by eating away my vacation time, or forcing me to take a longer vacation, leaving me with fewer flexible PTO days in case of emergency. Which, as a citizen of the United States, I need my PTO for sick time as well as vacation time. When you factor in those extra variables, it really doesn't seem worth it to drive to Vegas at all, with one notable exception, that being California. Honestly, if you have good AC in the car, bring a snack, water, and just hit the bathroom before you leave, you're probably in good shape. It'll take you a while to get to LAX anyway, then it's an hour or two getting in there, getting your bag checked, and then running through security. So you're really only shaving one or two hours off your trip in the first place. Maybe two and a half if you hit the LBC, but I'm patient enough to sit through another hour or so in the car for those savings. So ultimately, I think I've come up with a pretty simple formula for figuring out whether you're better off driving or flying once we've accounted for those other variables. I call it the Rocky Mountain Rain Shadow Principle, and here's how it goes. If you're west of the Rockies, then you're a car jockey. If you're east of the climb, fly every time. At least the principle should hold true for the summer. Fuel prices started to drop after the 4th of July weekend and hopefully should stabilize in the fall, possibly making this a moot point. But either way you go, please, please, please travel safely. Alright Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's episode and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like. And consider subscribing if you haven't already. Before I go, I just wanted to take a moment to shout out our patrons. Guys, it means the world to me that you choose to support me in this way and help keep Ace of Vegas independent of the YouTube algorithm. As you know, my content isn't always censor and advertiser friendly, so it goes a long way in keeping the channel running. If you want a more direct hand in keeping Ace of Vegas growing, I'll leave a link to the Patreon in the description box down below. In the meantime, how do you guys get to Vegas domestically? I know pretty much all of our foreign viewers will be flying in, but for those of you in the US, can you drive 55 or do you take it to the skies? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Until next time though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you strong hands, and of course, happy spinning you guys. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva Ace of Vegas. Viva